Hi, um, I'm Edwin Garcia. I'm an associate professor of materials engineering at Purdue University. And I'm here to talk to you about the, uh, the class fundamentals of rechargeable batteries. Okay, uh, this is a plot of energy density versus power density. And when you want to buy a battery or when you want to make a battery, this is where you compare all the different technologies. You can see all sorts of technologies such as, for example, the nickel cadmium technology, the nickel metal hydrate, uh, some recent technologies, the sodium nickel dichloride technology. But I mean, you can see all sorts of technologies that we have used in the past. And you can see the one that is being used the most these days, the lithium ion battery technology. You can see, for example, here, high energy density lithium ion battery technology, where you can see delivers a relatively small amount of power or very large energy density. In fact, we have never had as much energy density as we have now. You can increase, of course, the power density. Okay, you can bring it up here. But if you do that, you will lose some energy density, right? And if you want to bring it even further, you can do that, but you will lose a, a large amount of energy density. So the trick in when you're making a battery or when you're selecting a battery is how do you bring this envelope as far up as you can? In fact, the name of the game when you're making a battery is how far up and to the right in this space you can make a battery, okay? So the goal of this class is to try to understand what are the fundamentals behind that? What are the physics, the material science that controls the shape of this envelope? And how by understanding these fundamentals, we can shift this envelope up or we can just admit it's just not possible and pick a different technology to do that. Okay, so traditionally in battery technology, uh, you make a, a, a thin film set of structures and you put them in a canister. Okay, you can see here the, the actual lead that connects to the, to the top, the positive uh, contact. Okay, and in that canister, you wound the material. You can see here the different wounds. You can see that it's made out of, well, in this slide, you can see it's, you have a cathode, an anode layer. You can really see it here. The, uh, but if you are trying to make a battery, your first thought is, well, I need to pick the right chemistry. Okay, well, say in this case, lithium ion battery technology, lithium technology. Okay, you, you pick that. Okay, so once you have picked the right material, you still need to make it. You still need to figure out the best way to put it all together in here. And the way in which you make it matters a lot because it, deliver, it delivers, it emphasizes, it defines what the shape of that curve that I just showed you in the previous plot is, okay? So it uh, turns out that uh, we have to then look at more fundamentally, more in much more detail how the material behaves. It turns out that batteries are made out of particles. You can see here, uh, the three layers that I was just telling you about, you have a cathode layer made out of particles, say a lithium cobalt oxide chemistry, which is highly used for high energy density applications, a separator, which basically allows you to insulate, to not allow the, the electrons to go between them so that instead of going between the two layers, it goes around so we can actually use that battery. Okay, and we have the anode layer, you can see made out of also different particles that have different shapes and sizes. Okay, and as it turns out, it, it typically, anode materials are graphite. There's a reason for that, and why we don't use just pure lithium here. There's some material science rationale behind that. And uh, to the untrained eye, this may look like a very random, almost a uh, very cumbersome type of architecture, but uh, it actually, there's, it's a very highly engineered system. There's a lot of thought put into making it so that you get the highest possible performance and so that your battery lasts, say, somewhere between two to three years, okay? Obviously, we want to, to make that system last more, okay? And the trick of the, in the class is, how do we make these particles? How will we put them in there? What shape should they have? What response should they give you so that we get the highest possible response and that it lasts the longest? In some applications, you may not care. You may say, well, I only need to use it for three months. So even if after three months it dies, it doesn't matter. In other case, say, for example, for if you have an electric vehicle, you may want that battery to last for two or three years, maybe five years, uh, 
because it'll be an expense to try to replace that battery after that. It may actually raise the cost of your hybrid or your electric vehicle. So understanding those, uh, those fundamentals is important. Okay. So now if we look more closely to how those particles are made, uh, we will find out in the class that uh, those particles are not uniformly distributed. You can see here at a cross section of, of this microstructure of, of, of the, of a cathode layer, you can see that they have different shapes and sizes. Internally, you can see that they have uh, uh, different topologies, different, uh, even some cracks in it. And if you see what, what's occurring inside, you'll see that actually you have these open spaces that may or may not be good for battery performance. Okay. We, we may want to, to figure out ways to get rid of that. Okay. And, uh, overall, how you make the battery, how you make the colloidal mixture, how you, uh, uh, maybe tap it, maybe, uh, heat it up, uh, how you select the particles from the different vendors uh, will all impact on the response of the system. Okay. And we will talk about that in class. Okay. Uh, not only that, uh, you can see here in, in this plot that say, for example, if you go to bender A, you can get very nice spherical particles that could be very expensive, or you can go to bender B and you could get these particles that look more like, um, I don't know, like burritos or these ones over here that uh, that look more like hamburgers or, or cookies, okay? And depending on which type of particle you pick, you will get different morphologies of batteries and with that, also different types of responses. In some cases, the response could be very bad or could be very good. But if you want something that is very good, you will spend much more money than if you get something that may be bad, but it might be reasonable for your application. So one of the things that we'll emphasize in this class is uh, relating processing on how you make it to the properties so that we can target the specific response as a result of the starting materials and the processing parameters. Okay. There's of course going to be some statistical randomness, which uh, we will have to account for. Uh, and we want to find that optimal response. There is no such thing as one size fits all in rechargeable battery technology. So we want to find that optimal response for that application as a result of the parameters that we're analyzing. Typically, and usually when we're trying to make new batteries, we are looking at out of the box designs, say may, may have a different types of particle arrangements. You may, we will play on how these particles are arranged. Okay. So that we can get the best response possible. Okay. We will see how those correlations between the powders that we use and how we make them impact on the energy and power of the device. Okay. Uh, besides that, we also care, of course, as we were just saying a minute ago, hey, how the uh, battery fails. Here you have again a cathode. I'm sorry. Yes, a cathode and an anode. And you can see here that this gray growth that you see here is a lithium uh, deposit. The, the, in battery technology, we call those dendrites. Those dendrites are, uh, you can think of it as a tumor, okay? That if it crosses between the cathode and the anode, it'll internally short circuit, you will develop a little arc there that if you're lucky, it'll, it'll make your battery stop working. But if you're not lucky, uh, it can lead to battery failure in a very violent way. Okay. You don't want that. Okay. There are all sorts of other side reactions and other failure mechanisms that we will focus on. And we will look at all the different material science aspects uh, that impact the response of the system. Okay. Uh, then, uh, well, we also care about the dynamics of how that happens. They just say we may want to suppress them, but in some cases, once they form, we just want to understand how they evolve. And of course, the first step to being able to uh, remove or engineer something, it's understanding. And here in this plot, you have different silvery dendrites that are growing and they're all interacting with each other. You can see the background of the graphite layer. You can see the, uh, the changing, changing color as a result of the lithiation and the focus of the class will be on trying to understand the dynamics of that as a first step to try to engineer it, either by engineering the anode layer or by engineering the separator or by maybe engineering the charging process, which is also key. I mean, it's not the same if you want to recharge your battery in overnight, like we do in our cell phones, or if we want to recharge your battery in two hours to three hours, like we do in our laptops, right? It all it boils down to how much we want that battery to last. And you can see here what would happen if we are not very careful. Okay. Um, what are the course goals? 
Well, we want to understand the scientific fundamentals of battery operation, the material science behind that. We want to understand the limitations of every part, the issues and the current technological and processing challenge associating to existing chemistries for both anode and cathode materials. Okay, and uh, once we have that in place, we will be in position to discuss the trends and the future of lithium-ion battery technology. Okay, uh, at the end of the semester, at the end of the course, uh, uh, we will be able to correlate the processing, uh, even material, material selection on performance and durability of rechargeable battery technology. Okay, um, uh, what are the prerequisites? We will need elements of algebra and differential equations uh, and a basic level of physics and chemistry, roughly at the sophomore level, would be very useful. Um, uh, who should take this class? Well, if you're interested in understanding the battery lingo, this is a class for you, okay? If, if you want to know how batteries are made, what makes them tick, what are, how, how are they related to the fabrication, this is a good class for it. What controls the energy and power density of a battery, say to pick a battery or, or to discard a battery, okay? This is a class that talks about that. And to understand how batteries fail and maybe to extend their life, this is a class that will focus on that. Okay, if you're interested in all that, if you think this class is for you, well, registration is now open. Here's the link, okay, and I'm looking forward to working with you in the spring.